Hey everyone, it's Chris from Stan Blessings and I'm here today to give you a quick tutorial on how I created this fabulous watercolored look card. Um, this is the Cape Cod stamp set from Close to My Heart. Um, it's the Cape Cod card making version. There's a beautiful scrapbooking version also that has more detailed shells but um, this one just leads to so many possibilities and I kind of had some insight this week and wanted to share how I created this card. It is a little bit messy looking but I really like how kind of loose and all that it looks. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about the background. I'm not going to show you today how to make this background but I'm going to tell you about different possibilities for wood grain backgrounds. So lo let's go ahead and get started with our card. So I do need the Cape Cod stamp sets and I have those all ready to go. Got them in order. Um, I found that if I stamped the sand first because of this little bit of a, a lift in it, um, sometimes I'm not going to get it all the way parallel. So I'm going to actually start off with the middle layer. So I do need a piece of watercolor paper and close to my heart carries distress water paper, watercolor paper. And that's from Ranger. Um, but you can use regular watercolor paper. You just don't want to use regular paper that you normally use for your stamping and ink coloring because it's got to run. Okay. I'm going to set my stamp set aside. Now the inks that I chose to use were the tumble glass for the sky. And I went with this Mermaid Lagoon for the, the water. And then on the bottom, I have the pumice stone. You could also use a brown, but um, I really like the way the pumice stone looks. It's a little bit of a more neutral, almost sand-like color. So I felt it was really realistic. So I'm gonna use that for the sand. Now, if you look, and you might not want to do this, but I wanted a little bit of like the sunset look in there or maybe sunrise, I'm not sure. But I did add a little bit of the mustard seed for that. So I'm going to be careful, but I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's go ahead and get started with first my water. And I'm going to go ahead, I think I'm going to get my, I don't need this mat really, but I want to make sure I keep my workspace clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And I'm going to just ink it up. And I want to add, you know, a good amount of ink. Now I could just spritz the stamp, but I'm going to first go ahead and stamp directly to paper. Um, and then I'm going to show you what I did next. So again, I want to make sure that this is level, kind of centered. And I'm just going to go ahead and press that in. Make sure I get a good coverage. Put that away. It's nice and juicy. Now I'm going to go ahead and ink up my sky. Really add on a lot of and I'm gonna just put my sky a snitch above so that I can leave some space for um, the sunset. And I see that I didn't quite center it as well as I did before, but that's okay. I like to use paper towels for quick cleaning. I have them on hand. I'm gonna just add a little bit of yellow on the bottom here to try and get that sun in there. I don't want too much. Oh, gotta actually press down on it. There we go. And now the last layer is the sand. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up. And then I'm going to go ahead and hopefully this works. I mean, it worked the first time, but you know how things are when you're live and on camera. But we can always try it again because I have another piece ready to go. I forgot to give you the, men the dimensions. It's three and one quarter width and then it's four and a half inches um, in the height 
And so I was way up on that, but that's okay. We can always crop it down. And now I'm going to just take some water and spritz it and let it kind of go ahead and run and do its thing. And I like to have a napkin just to see if it's getting out of control in one area. I can quickly dab it up. And then you can always add a little bit more water. I'm going to come back in and stamp that blue back down over it while the paper is wet. And that kind of gives it a nice, and because I didn't clean off my stamp, I still have that ink on there. And just give it a little press there. And I really want to get that light blue, but without the yellow. And I should have had my stamp chamois for this because that would be great on that. But I'm going to just come in and come down one more time. So when this dries, it's really a nice kind of loose look. And you can see here how it turned out. So again, I didn't get it stamped quite centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this one more time. The other thing is I should have had my um, heat gun here so I could have shown you the next step, but I'm going to put this aside and see if it dries enough to show you the next step. So let's try this one more time, and this time let's see if I get it centered better. I'm going to go ahead and start with the sand, and we'll see if I'm a little bit better in the placement. There definitely can be some overlap here, because again, when you see a watercolored um, image it's not always really that but I'm gonna just go ahead and put that down press nice and good and then I'm gonna come in with the lagoon so by using the distress oxide inks I can get you know movement so that's what I really wanted to do and I can see here that, again, it's going to be a little bit crooked, but that's okay because um, not everything is just perfect. This time I'll probably go without the sun, although I do really like that sun. So I'm going to try it one more time with the sun. First, I'll put down the sky. Oops. And you can see how I... This is why I like to stamp first in the middle to make Make sure I get that line right. I'm going to go ahead and lift up and I'm going to just clean off here and get a little bit of the mustard seed. That mustard seed is super bright. You could even put like a little bit of a pink in there. And then I'm going to just come in and get that right there. All right, let's go ahead and spray it and see what happens this time. So I can add more water or less. You can see it's really running up there at the top because that's the way I was spritzing it. But if I come in and dab it right away, it's not bad. I still have that kind of runny look that where I wanted the colors to blend. And now I'm gonna come back in one more time. I could re-ink it, but I didn't this time. And got some blue in there, so I probably will wanna re-ink it just to make sure. So when you're watching live, you're seeing my whole process of when I'm doing this on my own. And if there's a mistake, I kind of try and work through it. And then again, at the end of it all, I tell myself, hey, it's just paper. If it's really, really bad, we can just throw it away. I like the blue, but I do want to add a little bit more coverage. And by me putting the stamp down it, it moves that water around and shifts the way the ink goes. I can actually see it moving under there. There, I like that a lot. Again, I'm gonna take that extra bit of yellow off. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue because I feel like my sky is kind of light. Got some funny lines from the ink pad. So I'm gonna actually try something that I was thinking about and that was to spritz the stamp itself and see what happens then. 
So there's actually two ways you can do it. You could spritz the stamp with the ink on it. There we go, I like that. Perfect. So now you can see I got this scene um, centered better. And while it's not exactly the same as this one, when it dries, it's gonna be gorgeous. So this first attempt has dried enough where I can show you now how I added my birds and my grass. Now, I thought if I was gonna stamp and then spritz the grass, it would just go all over the place. And I really wanted that part to be a little bit more controlled. So I kind of gave you a little highlight of what I was gonna do just now. What I do for the grass is I actually just spritz across the stamp. So I'm not going down on it, but I'm going across so that there's a little bit water landing, the droplets come down. I can see that this is wet. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp once. And while it's wet, I'm gonna stamp one more time. So look at how great that looks. It's not precise, but it also hasn't lost control so that it's kind of blotted everywhere. Um, and for the birds, I'm gonna do the same thing. This time I'm going to go ahead and use the chip sapphire and I use peel paint for the grass. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp those birds. And again, I'm gonna use just a little bit of water where I am spritzing across and not on top. And then I'm gonna come down and just stamp those in a lighter area. And again, I have a little bit of movement so that it's not like precisely inked, but it's also not splayed everywhere. This one looks like it's probably ready to go. Let's go ahead and finish that up and I'll have two more cards to finish. And I can't wait to tell you more about the background. So here I go with my peeled paint spritz across and then I'm going to just go one and two and I'll do my birds real quick in the chip sapphire spritz across and again you could even do that with the water and um, the sand and the sky. And there I had more water on there, so you can see I had a little bit more movement. So I might wanna come back down later with a black just to give it some firmness, but we'll see about that. So I'll go ahead and dry my hands, put away these inks, and let's talk about the great background on this card. So I'm going to be doing a video on how to sh make your own wood pattern paper and then you can do it in any color so you'll have to come back tomorrow for that video but in the meantime I want you to look at some of the things that you have I have the barnyard door left from last year I think it was probably out in the summer and this makes a fantastic background for this card so I could just stamp this wood grain pattern in any color or I could use the longer one and, you know, just change it. I could do multicolored. So look in your stash. You might already have a wood grain stamp set. If not, Close to My Heart still has the barn door available. And then also in the Cape Cod paper pack from Close to My Heart, you know that our paper comes with two sides of print. So on the back of this pretty feathered paper, is, you got it, a wood grain. That would just look really good with this card. Look at how good that'll stack up. And my border is just an eighth of an inch, so I really cut it small. But I could go like that, and I'm ready to go. But I hope you'll come back and visit me tomorrow when I give you a great tutorial on how to make your own wood grain paper with your inks, regular paper, and a scoreboard. Well, Thanks for tuning in for today's card, my faux watercoloring with Cape Cod. Be sure to visit my website if you need anything. Remember that when you place an order on my website, I automatically enter you to win 
Mystery Hostess Rewards. Have a great day. We'll see ya.